Yes, get in there. Hey guys, it's Blade again from Cardio Security. Today we're looking at a brand new Sony unit, the XAV AX5650. Okay, so what do we have here? The brand new Sony XAV AX5650. Now, those who know these stereos, they'll know that the predecessor of this model was the 5550. Uh, this is the upgraded 2022 version, literally just come out, uh, with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto via USB connection, Bluetooth streaming, hands-free calls, DAB radio, and now for this year, HDMI input. We're just gonna open up the box for you, show you the contents, obviously show you each piece individually, what it does, uh, and then obviously we'll power on the unit for you as well, so you can see exactly how it looks, the start-up time, features, I'll show you the CarPlay and Android Auto working, and so on, and then I'll give my personal opinion on the unit, and we'll go into more detail from there. But for now, let's open up the box. Okay, so we have the contents of the box out in front of us here. I'm gonna go through everything quickly for you now. So we have a fascia trim, just literally a little black trim that goes over the face of the unit. So if your, your fitting kit doesn't come with that particular trim, then you can use this one. Uh, underneath we have the instruction manuals, comes in all sorts of different languages, tells you all the information about the unit. Uh, next to that we have the Bluetooth microphone. This is obviously for your hands-free calls so the other person can hear you. So you plug the connection into the back of the head unit and then run it up to some visor or headline or something like that. That's that there. Now this unit has dual USBs, so uh, they are dedicated for a purpose. Now one is listed exactly for sorry, specifically for CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, and the other one is listed specifically for uh, your USB uh, music, so MP3, MP4 files, that kind of thing. Uh, now, in this little bag, we have the removal keys for the cage that comes with the stereo, and we have uh, four screws for the side of the body of the stereo. So if you have a fascia that uses side brackets, for instance, you use these screws to screw into the unit. And then behind the unit, we have your usual ISO to power connection for the back of the head unit. So then that will obviously go to your adapter for your vehicle. And then obviously we have the unit itself. So obviously the unit comes with its own cage. As I mentioned, if you're not using the cage, you're using a bracket format, then you use the screws. Uh, but otherwise you can use this cage or a flush fit cage, depending on your fitment. Now, down to the unit itself, and I'm gonna power it on for you in a second, but just to show you the actual uh, face of the unit. It's a seven inch capacitive touchscreen. Now I've already played with this a little bit and it's very, very touch responsive. I'll show you in a second. But other than that, we have a row of buttons along the bottom. So you have a home button, a volume, your skip tracks and your option button, which is very regular for uh, Sony units of this style. And on the back, you'll notice it's actually a single dim body. Again, very common for Sony units to do this. It makes installations a lot easier. Uh, it means you don't have to try and hide away all your wires. You can just tuck it underneath it's uh, very very handy for that but for now let me power it on for you and we'll show you the startup time and all the features okay guys so we have the unit powered on now what I'm going to quickly do before I show you any of the features of the unit I'm actually going to show you how quick this thing is to start up now uh, Sony units are quite well renowned for their quick startup times so let's see if this one has that same feature and so I'm going to quickly disconnect the power I'm gonna disconnect uh, it back up. Three, two, one, connected. Okay, so this one's a little bit slower than others. But it's not too bad. So again, that was about five seconds, I'd say. So really not too bad for, for a good spec unit like this. Now, so this is your home screen. That's a very bright picture on this. Um, not sure what they've done with this particular unit. Um, it's a capacitive touchscreen like the last one, but the touch responsiveness seems very good. Very much phone-like, it's not even laggy at all. I mean, you find a lot of the units are a little bit laggy, especially when you're scrolling through different features like this. So that's very good. I'll quickly run through these bottom parts. So we have your FM radio, your DAB, sorry, that's FM and AM, uh, your DAB, your Bluetooth audio, and your Bluetooth phone calls and then you have USB port one. So like I said, the USB port one is for your uh, MP3, MP4 files specifically. And you scroll across, you have USB port two, which can be used for music and your CarPlay. Uh, we have the HDMI, 
the rear camera, and then the settings. So that's pretty much it. Again, Sony units are very, very, not basic, but very simple, minimalistic, easy to use. So if you're after something that's easy to use, it's definitely a good option. Now, if we run through the buttons along the bottom, I've already explained what they do, but just to show you, they are obviously normal buttons, turn your volume up and down. You can skip the tracks, go back and forth. You have an option button here, which go into your quick options. So you can go into like a quick equalizer if you want to quickly change something. Obviously you have all your preset EQs. This is a 13 band EQ. And then you have subwoofer gain to turn subwoofer on and off. So that's just the Bluetooth there. We go back onto options. You can turn extra bass on or off. Back into options again. You can actually turn the screen off if you need to. Press option again. Sorry, press home. So that's that. Now when you connect up your phone, your CarPlay will automatically switch on. Uh, if you need to go back to it, you would press this, and that would go into that last item. Two things in terms of the background here. Obviously, you can change the wallpaper if you'd like to, and the time and date. Now to do that, you would go into settings. For the time and date, you go into general, and then date and time, so you can change it from there. And then for your background, you could go into settings again, go to visual, and then wallpaper. So you can change it to any of the presets, like that or that for instance, or you can even upload your own image via USB. Now you just need to make sure the picture quality is quite good because you'll be stretching it quite large to get it onto this screen. Uh, now, other thing I haven't mentioned yet is this HDMI. Now last year's model uh, did not have HDMI input. Now the benefit of this is, um, obviously if you have something like an Amazon Fire Stick or anything that uses as an HDMI input, so you can stream your videos onto this, obviously not whilst you're driving, but you can stream videos to this. Uh, and even you can do screen mirroring through the HDMI if you've got an iPhone, for instance. Uh, so you'd need an iPhone uh, lightning cable, two HDMI adapter, and then you can plug it into the back of the unit. So you could do an exact screen mirror and you can watch Netflix and stuff like that from there. So that's very handy to have. So now I'll show you the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto working, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I thought I would show you Android Auto first. Once again, I am an Android user, don't hate me, but that's how it is. Um, so I'm connecting my phone to USB just here, into USB 1, which is for your smartphone connection for CarPlay and Android Auto. It's obviously USB-C connection here, the back bottom of my phone. Plug her in. We'll charge the phone at the same time, obviously. And as you can see, switches straight away into Android Auto. So use it as normal, I'm not going to go into too much depth. Again, it's the same on every unit. Uh, but essentially, that's how you connect it. Obviously, if you disconnect it, it will turn off. But if you are connected, I'll just show you quickly. And let's say you come out into your main screen, you'll see Android Auto pops up over here, so you can both go back into there through that. All right, so I'll show you CarPlay now. We have an iPhone here, which is going to connect it exactly how it was. So connected into USB 1, into USB to Lightning adapter. I'll plug the phone in now. Obviously, we'll charge the phone. It's going to ask you to allow, so we just allow that, and then straight away into CarPlay. Very quick to go into both CarPlay and Android Auto on this unit. I've noticed um, some of the other units do tend to be a bit slower, but yeah. Same as, same as it always is, you can go into maps, go to music, messages, whatever you need to. Now I'm going to show you the back of the unit, uh, all the connections on the back, show you what they do and how you would connect them. So, let's disconnect our power. Now turn the unit around. Okay, let's get this out of the way. So obviously that's your ISO connection, which I showed you previously. We have ISO speaker, ISO power, and then we have the main connection for the stereo. Okay. So, these are your two USB ports. They are taped to the back of the unit. But essentially, let me just take that off quickly. We have USB 1. This is for your 
smartphone connection, so CarPlay, Android Auto, and this will also play music via USB. And we have USB port 2, which is there, if you can see it, which is for your USB, purely for USB connection, so for MP3, MP4 files, that kind of thing. Okay, so on, starting on the left-hand side, here we have a DIN connection for your FM and AM aerial. Now, here is all your pre-out connections. Pre-outs meaning the outputs for amplifiers, if you're going to connect them. So we have a front, a rear, and a single sub-out connection. So just bear in mind, obviously you have a pair for front, a pair for rear. If you do add a subwoofer to this system, you will need a Y splitter for your sub. So make sure you have a left and right input, sorry, output. Uh, this yellow connection here is actually for a re reversing camera. So if you do want to add a reversing camera to this unit, you can do that. It's just an RCA connection into the back there. And then we have a mic input in the top. And this little blue connection here, this is labeled remote. Now this be can become quite confusing. I do have a few customers coming to me saying, my steering wheel controls aren't working. I can't find where it connects. This is for your steering wheel control input. So if you're using a harness that, which has a patch lead, and you're trying to activate your steering controls from factory, this is where your input would be. So it's usually a jack plug, connects into the remote. So not really labeled it very easily, but it's this one here. Now that's it for the back of the unit. Obviously you have your power over here. Now HDMI is, I don't know if you can see it, just in there. So that's your HDMI connection. So it's nice and tucked away in the back of the unit there. So that's obviously for your Amazon Fire Sticks or your uh, screen mirroring or anything like that. So that's pretty much it for the basic features of the unit. One last thing I did forget to mention, sorry, it's very small, tucked out of the way. If you can see the little white pin just there, that's your DAB connection. So it's your SMB connection for your DAB. That's it. Ah. Oh. Okay, guys, that's the pretty much the end of the video. Uh, just to quickly run through the specs of this unit again. So this is the XAV AX5650, uh, not to be confused with the 5550, that was the older model. Uh, but the specs are Bluetooth streaming, hands-free calls, DAB radio, CarPlay and Android Auto via wired USB connection, and also HDMI. Um, very, very good unit. Um, now, my personal opinion on this, for a Sony unit, I think this is very, very good. They've stepped up in their spec, personally. Uh, I love the fact they've add, added the HDMI, so you have the option for screen mirroring, or add a fire stick and stuff like that. Um, screen response is very good. Uh, even, I even go as far to say it's one of the fastest ones I've seen so far. Um, only thing I'd say is it's very basic. So if you're the kind of person that likes going into settings and playing around with stuff, uh, moving stuff around, like in previous videos where you could change widgets and stuff like that. You can't do this on this unit. So that's one downfall, but other than that, very, very good unit. Uh, but this is available on our website at caraudiosecurity.com and our sister company, The Tuning Store. Uh, so do check it out. All the specs are listed on there and obviously prices on our website. Uh, but other than that, that's it from me. Please make sure you like, share and subscribe and we will see you in the next video.